Hey guys, uh, Kvan here with a relatively short guide on the new LADX any% percent no save and quit, no wrong warp and no abound speedrun route. Uh, this is going to be a tutorial on like all the tech we've like, found in last month. Uh, I won't go through the entire run. What I am going to do is I'm going to say you must watch Riddler's uh, tutorial on this game before watching this. I'll link in the comments, um, so yeah, uh, watch that before watching this because I will not cover the whole route. Everything that I don't cover will be exactly the same as his, I'm just going to cover the differences between the route now. Um, let me just uh, finish this. So since he made his tutorial, there's been two main glitches found and that is the um, the flock skip which I'm going to show after this um, cave and the bomb event trigger so the flock skip uh, you basically use a text box and I'll show you where uh, it's right of this dungeon you use a text box to uh, clip through an object and actually wiggle yourself out. So I, I did this mini dungeon so I can show you exactly where it is. Right, so here you can actually clip through this um, rock if you're clipped going into the screen. And that skips quite a, quite a sizable portion of uh, of the split. Um, so this skips most of the done. Well, most of the um, forest actually. Uh, so what you do, uh, I didn't explain that, is um, you go down the screen. Uh, you don't jump in the hole. You jump over the hole. Avoid the hard piece of chain, which is already gone. Uh, and then you clip into the um, side of the pit here. Now it's it doesn't always go first time. You don't have to be fully clipped like I am, you can be clipped less so. Um, it's the same kind of clip as you need to be with Villa Skip. Um, yeah, Villa Skip Escape. So what I'm going to do is now that I'm clipped, I'm going to hold only up and jump. Once I'm on this screen, I'm going to uh, hold up, jump, um, Okay, I didn't do that right. Uh, but there's actually a quick way of doing it. I'll show you the slow way first. Okay, so the normal way of doing it, you hold up, when you get close, you hold left, and then you wiggle out. Easy as that. Uh, you basically need to slide along um, this side of the wall. So yeah. Um, there's actually a quicker way to do it, um, using the jump, which I'm not as good at. Uh, let me load a save state. Uh, flux skip. Uh, you actually use this instance twice. Um, potentially three times. Um, but that's up to runner's discretion. Right, so the other way of doing it is you jump into it and you hold up and left um, out of the jump. That's a, quite a bit more tight with the timing, but it's a lot quicker to, to get it. Because sometimes he doesn't slide perfectly on the wall. Oh, I didn't get that time. Uh, one more try. Yep. And uh, what, once you're stuck in that, you basically alternate left and right and you wiggle out that way. Uh, from here, you jump over to these flowers. I tend to sit on this side because that gives him like more chance of eating the flowers. And then you run inside dungeon 2. Uh, so... Excuse me. Right. The next thing that's new is actually a, another flock skip. 
but this is in dungeon three this time, and this alters the dungeon th the dungeon three quite significantly. Um, I will show you what it is first. So down here, you can actually skip this key block, doing exactly what we just did. Um, I'll show you the new dungeon three route. Um, after doing this, so as before, you clip into the wall. Um, you can jump. Uh, you can jump out and hold down and left and just wiggle out, uh, or you can do it normally. Uh, it's much quicker doing it with a piece of power, I should add. So, I mean, you should still have piece of power at that point in Dungeon Three, unless you're me on manual my runs. So, I'm holding down and left, and yeah, you just wiggle out of it. That means there is a difference in the route because you can skip a key. Uh, I won't show the entire dungeon. I will show you the point at which the dungeon differs. So, uh, if I can find my save state, there's two ways of doing this. Um, I will show you the quickest way of doing it, and um, bear with me because I am terrible at Dodongos. Um, so. I'll try what Riddler said to do to Dongos. That RNG. This is why I skipped the Dongos. So, do this normally. You get the boots chest normally. I saw I did that wrong, but it doesn't matter. <coughs> Actually, I'll redo that. I did that wrong. Um, I'll probably edit that out. I'm so used to doing it my way. Uh, you can actually skip the dongos, but it's actually slower. Uh, because you have to do a different key. And I think I'm the only runner currently that skips dongos. So we killed the dongos. We get boots. Go into the portal. This is all standard. Get the key. Still standard. Oh, that was bad. Right, once you get the Nightmare Key, you don't go to the, uh, the bombs. You basically go up here, and you skip the last key block. So yeah, um, I will just quickly um, show the method for skipping Dodongos if if you were to do that, um, seeing as skipping Dodongos actually saves you quite a bit, quite a few bombs. And as you'll see uh, in a bit, there's a trick which requires quite a lot of bombs um, through a run. So you might be a bit, uh, a bit tricky on that. Uh, right. So the way to skip Dodongos, um, you have to open the first two key blocks. And wow. You basically super jump off this wall, and I'm failing right now. And what happens there? You go and get the nightmare key, kill the bombs, and then you go to the actual boss. 
Uh, skipping to dongos is much slower. Uh, it's so much quicker to uh, to do the dongos and skip the key up north. Um, honestly, I'd, I would say it depends on how you fill with bombs. So our next route change. This is where the route starts really changing. Uh, let me find my exit split. Right, so the route out of Dungeon 3 um, changes. So we no longer get the um, the Honeycomb, the Ocarina, or Marin. So that's quite a considerable time save. So we're going this way. Uh, we're actually going to do Roosters. Not Bruce Skip, War of Skip now. Um, now, War of Skip is. <coughs> it's something you really have to practice on a lot before doing a run. Uh, because there are, I believe, three ways of soft locking. And it's, it's pretty easy to soft lock on it. Um, I will tell you my method for doing it, but other people have different methods. <coughs> right, so obviously we want to skip the walrus, um, which we can do. Uh, what you're going to want to do here is equip feather and bombs. Ignore my amount of bombs, you'll often have around five or six at this point, depending on like how you spend your bombs in the early part of the run. This trick, uh, called bomb event triggering, is the main trick we found in the last few weeks. Um, and this is done by placing a bomb on alternate frames as you're screen transitioning. Um, and War Skip is the only really risky one because you can soft lock quite easily. If you don't leave the screen in time, you get locked out of your movement and your menus. If the walrus respawns, you soft lock because you get locked out of your items and your menus. Also, if you leave the screen too early, you get infinite song glitch, which uh, locks you out of your items and your menus as well. So, you can do this buffered or unbuffered. Honestly, I prefer to do it buffered because it saves some bombs. Uh, so what I do, <coughs> I jump right to the edge, um, so that I'm on the last pixel before screen transitioning. You have to be facing up or down for this glitch, so I uh, press my pause menu. As soon as I unpress the pause menu, I, uh, I buffer the bomb and the upright button. And then, as soon as I'm starting to screen transition, I buffer the pause menu again. So this is the second buffer. From here, I do exactly the same. I buffer the bomb and upright. And that triggers the... that triggers Marin Song. <coughs> now, what you need to do here is you get two... two types of... well, two opportunities to make inputs here. So you want to be holding left and sp uh, spamming the text skip button. Um, so that worked perfectly. I will uh, reload that state and I will show you uh, I'll show you sort of the other thing that could happen. Cause you won't always get like that if you do buffered. Sometimes he'll place the bomb before your second buffer and you need to know how to avoid that soft locking you. Right, that's exactly the same as the first one. Bear with me. Still bear with me. Basically, the way you know this trick works is um, two bombs get placed. <coughs> if two bombs get placed before your second um, your second buffer, 
you have to do something different uh, because if you go straight left you'll end up soft locking and the walrus will respawn uh, so what I do is I hold up and left or down and left with the first input and you'll see I go to the screen and then I hold left um, to exit the screen that avoids a soft lock I will I will try to show you what a soft lock looks like now also I'll try and show you unbuffered I'm not good at it though Yeah, that stays on the screen. Right, I do buffered. No, I actually switched item. So I'll leave the screen a frame too early, and you'll see what one the soft locks looks like. Basically, the trick will lock you out of your items and your menus, and the only way. To, oh, I got an infinite song glitch. As you can see, I can't actually press any of my items. The way you clear this is going into a cave. Which you can off the water skip, but you can't go into this because you need a bomb for it. Uh, so, a race strategy I found is you actually bomb this before trying the trick. Um, let's see. Let's uh, quick load it. I'll try and get one the other soft lock so you can see what it looks like. <coughs> right, this time I won't exit the screen in time and you effectively see how that soft locks. It's very difficult not to exit the screen in time. I find it's easier to soft lock by leaving the screen too early. So you never want to see this rabbit. If you see this rabbit, you soft lock. Can't move, can't menu, can't save and quit. So I'm going to reload that one more time. I'm going to do it and I'm going to show you effectively what it does to the root. Right, so I got, I got on the second buffer. So I'm holding down and left. This basically gives you the X. This uh, delays your exit from the screen a few frames, which you need um, to actually pull it off. I, I was holding the wrong inputs. Wow, I'm failing on this on a tutorial. Normally, I'd I wouldn't recommend a trick like this to new runners, but it saves so much time. Just just give it a try. Um, try this out. See how you feel with it. If you find a method that works for you consistently, um, give it a try. The only problem is that it's, it does soft lock. So I mean, if you're having a really good run that you don't want to lose then bear in mind you could potentially lose a run here right um I can't remember the quickest way right okay so you go into the desert as normal I think the quickest way is up here you go through here and you go into the cave I think it's been timed at a few seconds longer if you um fall in the land model pit right and now there's a new quick kill for Lamola as well. Uh, so what what you do? Normally you would jump and fire arrows. What you do here is you hold down and you basically fire two arrows like that. You don't jump or anything. In fact, jumping will probably lose you quick kill. And then it's just like normal. Uh, then the uh, the next major route change. Um, I won't show uh, because it's you basically you don't get Mambo uh, because you don't have the Ocarina you don't get Mambo you don't do the Ocarina at all um, so 
that means the next root change is dungeon 5. Um, so I will I will only show the bits of dungeon 5 which change. But I need to get there first. So because you don't have Mambo you have to walk back. And it's quite tight on hearts. And you have to fight more of these armor armor knight dudes. The helm of swords. You want to save as much hit points as possible in this dungeon now. You don't want to do what I'm doing here and just taking everything. Um, so you walk back. Now this you can actually make it onto that far platform. What you do is... Uh, not that. I'll show you on the way back. Um, actually I'll show you now. If I don't fail getting there. So you need to be right at the edge. Oh. Typical, I fail it when I'm doing it. Sorry. So you have to be right at the edge um, with momentum. So jump at the last second and hold it. Ah, oh, I think it. I think it's easier with piece of power. Um, I haven't got a set for this room yet. Um, if those do become a problem, uh, it takes six seconds to use the powder on them. And yes, powder does kill them in one shot. Um, so it's actually quicker to uh, not use powder. Let me uh, fast forward to the next major difference, which will be coming back from the uh, the nightmare key jump. Um, so let me actually do this first. Typical, I fail. So once you got the key, jump in the hole, come back through. Now you can get through. You can go through that screen without taking damage. I've not found it yet. Um, that room with the spikes is a real problem. So be careful. I'm probably going to die here. I don't actually know how I didn't take damage there. So yeah, you just do this room normally. You get to the fourth style first fight. Um, you do actually save time here because you don't get Mambo and so I think it's it's worked out as mam you save like you lose the time that you save getting mambo um, throughout the run by having to run back to places. The time you save is by not getting the ocarina, which is quite a considerable amount of time. So uh, we'll do this guy because this is my closest save state. Now here you want to equip boots and sword. There's actually probably a quicker way so you can kill the stealth first close to the door. You have the hook shot, you charge down here. You need the sword out to block to break that thing. Um, then you switch the hook shot and uh, and further. Well, I didn't even get that jump, even with piece of power. Oh, never mind. I get in runs sometimes. So you just spam these with hook shot. 
and you're back to where you were originally. So the next difference is a real short difference. Um, I'm going to fail on these blobs. There's also a flock clip in this um, dungeon. So you don't have Mambo, so you just come back through here. Go right, down. Yeah. And then uh, this next tower room can be a bit difficult. Um, so, what we're going to do, I'm going to show you the flock clip for this dungeon. Um, the flock clip is a safety strap. So, we'll do the whiz boom first. Now, this is a safety strap because um, on the super jump back from the uh, Nightmare Key, you can actually soft lock by getting stuck in this wall. Now, it's, a it's still quicker to do the super jump, but it wastes almost no time by doing it this way. It wastes two screen transitions. Um, so if you're nervous about getting that soft lock, what you do, you do the super jump as normal. It's crucial you do not get that key chest down there. Um, otherwise you can't do the safety strat. Because it relies on a um, text box. Um, I tend to find you have to lift this pot to do it. Um, so I clip down here. I well, I didn't get it quick enough. You have to be really quick, so not even buffering the jump works. Right, so you have to hold down and down and right as you screen transition, and then you get out that way, and then you pick up this key. If you have picked up the key, you end up using on that key block, and you won't get the text to get you through. Now we go on to the um, the next part. Uh, I won't cover Rooster Skip with Bow Wow because it's not that much different than regular Rooster Skip, to be honest. What I will cover, like you pick, you pick up no rupees nowadays, nowadays except for Log Cave. Um, I will cover Flame Song Skip. Frog song skip rather. So normally you would need the frog song to skip this dude. However, with bomb event triggering, and you can do this buffered or unbuffered. I'm gonna attempt to get this unbuffered. You can actually make him wake up. Well, my inputs are terrible. Okay, let me let me do it buffered. It'll be easy to show. So, remember you want to be holding uh, up and left because you have to be facing up or down. So, um, we basically did that. Uh, skipped him. Skipped needing the frog song. Uh, now this didn't work for me the other day in a run. Um, so if it doesn't work for you, you have to come into here. Because uh, that resets your sub pixels. I don't fully understand subpixels, but trust me, they exist. And they can stop the trick from working. 
So you basically um, do that, you enter D8 this way. Now because you don't have the... you do not have the ocarina. Uh, let me skip forward. Do I have a better split for this? I actually, yeah, I'll, I'll show um, some pickups you have to pick up. Wait. So, doing this normally. So after you get that key, go down here. You need to pick up the bombs and the arrows at the minimum. Uh, whether you get the whether you get the hearts is up to you. I normally get the hearts. Um, the bomb, the bombs and arrows you need. Like th there's no other way about it. You need those for the run. Um, so Riddler showed that quick here in his uh, video. Now because we don't have Mambo, we have to do Blano, uh, which I'll show you a strategy for him. It's not failing there, or there. Right, so um, normally you would do a skip here, a uh, skip lane, a super jump off this wall. You no longer do that. Um, it's actually quite, it's actually slower by a few frames to do that um, than to do this normally. Because you need a teleport to start the dungeon, you don't have Mambo. I do in this, uh, in this save state. Um, so, you need the boss teleport. Um, so what I do, is I jump down here, I point up, hold my sword out, and then I come down here. You basically, um, jump above him with the spin slash. Well, I'm failing. Yeah, don't do that. Okay. Uh, that was a really, really bad example. Uh, let me reload it. Well, I have to. I have to rename my spits. So you have to jump above Blano, sort of, to get the spin slashes in. It can be a bit of a troll, but with practice you can get it right. I've only just started doing him again myself. So, um, Jesus jump. Uh, I think, I think the Jesus jump was covered um, by Riddler. Uh, but what I want to show with the Jesus Jump is something that's in the same room. These arrows, you need to pick them up because we no longer do death or skip. Um, so yeah, pick those up. Then the next change will be in Dungeon 7. Um, which I've actually got a video on this one. find it. Right. Scenario. You've just cleared the third pillar. You now need to clear the fourth pillar. You can save 10 to 15 seconds uh, by not taking the ball around. And effectively uh, what you do for this um, 
I found a way, but I think someone else found a buffered way that's quicker. Um, so you jump down here. It's absolutely crucial with any kind of bomb event trigger. You must not fire an arrow in the same plane. So, for this to work, you can't fire a bomb arrow at this wall. You must use a normal bomb. If you fire a bomb arrow, this trick won't work. Uh, same with firing arrows in the overworld for walrus skip and frog song skip. Um, so once you're clipped down here, uh, you want to press your pause menu because this, is act this actually resets the cycles on the torches, which is how I rely on it. And um, you basically, you buffer the bomb button and hold down and it does it virtually every time. And it basically skips the pillar, so you don't have to go around with the ball. You just go around like this. You don't have to worry about the um, hook shot clip. You go up here. Um, it's worth grabbing those bombs as well. Uh, because there's still even more event triggers. But you should be okay on bombs by now, depending on how many you've spent to get to this point. Uh, the next route change. Um, I don't believe there is one in Dungeon 4. The next route change would be after Dungeon 4. Uh, I don't have a state for exiting Dungeon 4. So, we're just going to kill Fish Boss. You want to equip uh, Boots and Feather here. Because without Mambo, there's a uh, quite a bit of running to do. I thought I was out of the dungeon already. So once you complete dungeon 4, uh, you have to run back to the egg. Um, all this, like all this running back instead of membering, does actually save time. Uh, it it saves time over getting the ocarina and getting member. Oh, and there's there's one crucial thing I forgot to mention. It's the route after dungeon six. So you go this way normally. Don't get caught by the like like. Um, you can normally clip past that mob blue. So this leads on to another new trick. Well, it's the same trick I've been trying for most of the run. Now this trick only works if you've got all the instruments, so... It's like not skipping anything in the game. So what you can do... Um, Without Marin Song, you can actually trigger the egg to open. Basically, by doing that. Alright, you buffer the menu, and then you buffer the bombs, uh, and they drop two. They open the men. They open the egg without even needing the ocarina. Uh, so you don't need Marin Song. Skips Marin Song. Um. Of course, tech skip I think was shown in the um, in the in Riddler's tutorial. Uh, just quickly before I show um, death or because you can no longer death or skip. Um, I will show you the route after Dungeon Six because I forgot to mention that.
So we'd kill this boss nice and easy. At this point you want to be equipping bracelet and boots. Now the quickest way, because you would normally remember at this point, the quickest way is not going through the portal uh, in Animal Verge, is to actually go up the um, go up the river by swimming. Uh, which you might think strange. Swimming is actually quicker than boots around, but it's a lot less screen transitions. That's the key. And it's, it's very direct. basically going directly north exactly where you want to go. So you get the owl and then you swim up this. And um takes a few screen transitions. Obviously if we had if we had uh, given the monkey the stick or actually the uh, bananas I think we would have been able to uh, boots up there. So yeah, you, you go here and um, you're on your way to uh, Rooster Skip. By doing Frog Song Skip, you have to do Rooster Skip. There's there's no other option to it. Um, but with that, you skip all the rupees and anything else. So the last thing I'm going to show is um, what you do for. Death or actually, I'll load the gallon split. Um, so obviously, you don't use the you don't use the ocarina to buff a gannon anymore. I would recommend you um, equip bow and feather. In fact. Don't even think about not equipping Feather. Unless you're Riddler. Um, so I often get him in this corner. I'm quite a bad this fight. So this is completely RNG when he opens his eyes. You can hit him with four arrows per cycle. Uh, but I, I'm quite bad at that. You need 16 hours to kill him, so make sure you don't waste more than you need. So yeah, that's uh, that's how you do the final boss. You just keep him in the corner. And uh, use further when needed. Stand just below the stairs because if you stand on the stairs, you don't automatically get it. You have to walk on the stairs. Uh, so that's it. That's all the route changes. Um, this all saves probably around eight to nine minutes, I would say, based on my times. Um, so, yeah, thank you for watching. Um, as you will have seen, you need to have watched Riddler's tutorial. Uh, like, comment, subscribe. And uh, shout out to Riddler for doing the original tutorial. And actually, shout out to Leon, um, who did the tutorial before him. Uh, so, yeah, check those out. I'll put a link to uh, to Riddler, certainly. And I'll see if I can put a link to Leon's. But yeah, thank you for watching.